Welcome to Eco Ask Why. This is going to be a special episode. It's just an idea and its heroes combined. So we're just we're going to bring them all together here. We're going to be talking about advocates for vocations. And I tell you what, I brought in Amber Wilburn. That's right. You all have seen her on LinkedIn. She's out there. I, I think I've got everybody in the family except her daughter now that we've interviewed. And then her her brother Jody Woolwine. He's he's joining us as well. So Amber and Jody, how are you doing today? Great. I'm doing great. Thank you. That's awesome. That's awesome. It's been exciting to work with with uh you know your family amber with with tim and michael it's just i feel like uh, we're connecting every other week we're, we're we're on a video call together so i'm excited about this one for sure thank you awesome well i know you're so both of you are very passionate about vocations and and being those advocates out there maybe just get us started for the listeners out there you know share about your personal journeys that you know in, impact the, voc- the vocations that you have right now okay um as as we were saying, um, I was with Vic at uh, Salem High School uh, in the Vocational Industrial Clubs of America. And uh, I don't know if anybody knows, but the uh, VICA is no longer their their label, their Skills USA now. I believe they changed in 2004 over to that. Um, okay. I, uh, I took machining and uh, automotive and photography. That was years ago, you know, when we actually had. 35 millimeter cameras and all right. that. But, uh, and then um, from there, um, right out of high school, I, I did my apprenticeship at Graham White. I did, uh, I worked in a small machine shop. We made eight inch scale locomotives and locomotive cars. Uh, we did ITT work. We did some uh, work on the night vision goggles. And then uh, from there, I was there about six years from there, I went to Carter Machinery which is Caterpillar. I worked there for eight years. And then I went to Mercer USA, a C Corp, uh, where I'm at now. I've been there 21 years and I've done a little bit of everything when it comes to trade there. I'm uh, a machinist. Um, and then uh, from there, I went into quality. Uh, we're under the ASME umbrella, American Society of Mechanical Engineers. And, um, and then I've been in management ever since. But um, that's about it. So that's my journey so far. <laughs> that, that, I'm very proud of that's, <laughs> that's quite a journey. A podcast, a little nervous, sorry. <laughs> it's okay. We look, we haven't lost a patient yet, so it's all good. <laughs> you know, just just, just no. have some fun. Go ahead. How about you, Amber? So my journey um, also started at Salem High School. Um, both of us. You know, when we were in high school, we kind of didn't know like what the next step was. We didn't know, you know, a lot of the younger generation had goals and they knew what colleges they were going to. But for us, it was just totally different. And I did marketing at Salem High School, which led me into years later um, working for professional marketing companies, one here in town, Robertson Marketing Group, which were huge mentors of mine really good encouragers taught me a lot and then i moved to charlotte north carolina and worked for another promotional marketing company and it just opened up so many doors for me and all the opportunities i could ever wish for and i really actually miss that job very much but um so i don't i didn't do um anything like my brother did so i had no skills um especially with what i'm doing now but here I am now doing controls with my husband and it's definitely been a work in process 16 years later, 17 years married. <laughs> right. Right. Well, but, I mean, both amazing journeys. And I mean, when you hear Vicka, when we were even talking about it, Amber and we were talking, you know, when you said Vicka, I had to Google it. I mean, I remember something about Vicka, but it's, it's no, yeah. so, it wasn't something that really, uh, that, that I remembered you know, quite frankly, just, it just didn't pop right back up. So I mean, where had the VICA days gone? Are they, do, do we ha- still have these VICA programs? Uh, or are they called something differently now? Uh, yes, sir. Chris, we still have them, but it's called skills USA, but you know, I've kind of kept up with, with it a little bit. Um, and I don't blame it on skills USA or VICA, but their business model has changed. They, they're, they're more about soft skills now than hard skills. In my opinion, um, if you go to their website, you don't see anything about welding, machining, um, auto body, anything like that. Um, our local, uh, Votech programs, you do see that. Um, 
I believe it's um, uh, Roanoke Technical Education Center. It's over at PH. Mm -hmm. I did not know that was there. I had to I had to research that. Of course, the Burton Center for Arts and Technology. Um, they have a real nice business model. It shows everything on there, except for machining. And I pretty much know why. But as far as Vega goes, um, you know, the thing that was glaring to me, Chris, is that in um, or presently, there's 394,000 members and alumni, uh, which is good, you know, and I think they're trying their best. But in 1992, Vicka was founded in 1965, but by 1992, they were averaging 270,000 members a year. And, you know, that's that that turns into alumni. So you can kind of do the math on that. Wow. And then um, currently, um, Skills USA is uh, partnering with 650 national businesses, trade associations, and unions. So in 1992, 2,780 in the construction field alone. So, you know, it's really, um, it's fallen off. And yeah. there's, there's so many reasons why the, 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 the burning question is, how do we get it back? Right. You know? Right. Right. Jody, when he was in Vicka, um, he's also an artist, by the way. He can paint just about anything. And he, tell me about your painting that you did. It was, uh, it was a, uh, ab basically an advertisement for Vicka. It was, um, uh, it was a big poster board and I had uncle Sam in the middle when he's in his red, white, and blue. And he's pointing at you saying, you know, I want you. And then around it was all of the trades. Like I had a welder and a machine, just little pictures around it. And that ended up, uh, winning the state competition in 1987, I believe. Wow. Um, and Do you, you still know, have I, that? We were just the, talking about yeah, it. The last I heard, Chris, and this was about 10 years ago, it was in the display case at Salem. I don't know if it is now because simply because it's not Victor anymore. Okay. Um, I really don't know, but I would love to have it back. I mean, well, if, it, you know, if you could get a picture of it, we're going to drop it in this video and, 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 and Eco asks why I go check it out. Cause I'd love to see if we can get a picture. That'd be amazing. Absolutely. And I, I'll see if I can't reach out to Salem and, and, and see if I can't get that back if it's still there. Mm -hmm. So, cause you know, I'm an old guy, Chris, that was back in 87, man. That was a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd so, say that those stats though, I mean, they're really alarming. I mean, when you really start thinking that math, I mean, that's, it gets, it, you know, it gets dwindling, it starts dwindling pretty quickly. Yes, sir, Chris. It, it's very alarming. And, you know, um, and I think it's because of, you know, we're, we're, we're on such a global market right now. And when you, when you have a, when you have a global economy, you're, you're, you're it's, it's free trade. Everybody's in it together. Um, which means that we get work from, uh, we get items from other countries. Um, you know, we don't make them here in the U S. Um, I think one thing that was a real shot in arm to the trade school was back in the Reagan era. You know, it was, uh, his motto was everything made in the USA. Right. And I was a young, I was you know, 17, 18 years old then. And I'm going to tell you what, it was, it was, the trade was there. I mean, if you wanted a trade, it was there. Yeah. You know? Right. And currently it's, it's here now. It's just a matter of, you know, getting the younger generation involved and getting that word out. But, uh, you know, when I was in high school in the late eighties, it was uh, trade was, you know, the, the, the classes were full. Very you prominent. Know? Yeah. Very prominent. They yes. might have been in the back of the school or in the basement, but they were very prominent. Yes, very prominent. And uh, I was just thinking, so you were late 80s. So I was late 90s. So I graduated in 99. Right. And it, it had really flipped by then. So right. I, I did go into the electronics class. I had that, but it was not a big class. Uh, we It was also, we weren't in the basement, We were, but we were at the bottom side of the school, like the, the back yeah. building of the school, right? And that's where the auto yeah, mechanics, right. the woodworking, you know, I don't even think we had machining, but we definitely had electronics. Uh, and, and I started thinking about, you know, just for this conversation, you know, we celebrate when these kids, you know, go, go, go to a four year school or they pick where they're going to go. Right. Sometimes they don't even, be, they don't even have that in local papers, but yes, the celebration needs to be around the kids who are actually, you know, pursuing trades as well. And it's just like, there's too big a gap between the way we celebrate this and the way we don't even acknowledge or celebrate that. Exactly. And, maybe, yeah. and, and I just got chills when you said that because we need to shift our, we just need to shift the way we're thinking or the yeah, way the kids are thinking. The current, the current mindset, Chris, is that uh, 
uh, college is the only path. Right. It is a path. It is not the only path. Right. So, you know, it's, um, you know, it, I think it just needs to get out there to the kids uh, in school. And I think the parents need to drive it a lot more. You know, oh, sure. my mom and dad, and Amber can tell you, you know, they, they were really about Amber and I getting the trade. I mean, yeah. you know, and uh, which makes sense. We were great. We grew up with a working mentality. And I know I've told you that before. Yep. And the working mentality was like what Jody said. It was like learn a trade because you could never go wrong with knowing just this one trade. And even you know, when we do get the word out to our high schoolers or even the generation below us, we need to let them know that it's okay not to go to school right away if you choose not to. Uh And if you choose a trade, I mean, welders, welders are coming out making very good money and also benefits right Mm -hmm. off the bat. Not only that, but carpentry, plumbing, electricians, and we have to let them know that this is not, you know, middle-class jobs. This is actually in-demand jobs. You're, you are, it's a relatable thing. You know, you're able to present yourself personally through these jobs. It's almost like an art. And I think what we're forgetting to tell kids is, you know, this is your art. This is your time to shine. This is your time to say, Hey, I made that. That was me. That's you right. Know? And, they, and right. the pride in the dignity of work has um, went by the wayside. Exactly. Believe, and it so. should be more about the reward instead of the paycheck. Absolutely. Like seeing something from start to finish. Right. Yep. And I think some of these kids need to understand too, you know, there's a potential road to entrepreneur. If you learn a trade, look, I, I'm talking to you, Amber, TW Controls. I mean, you're entrepreneurs, you're, you're, the, you're proven. If you learn a trade, you prove value, you bring it to the market there's there there's a great future in that and i think that's what is is greatly missing we don't talk about entrepreneurship or or don't get me started on on teaching kids finances and things like that we missed the boat on that completely yes we did you know but but this is a great path and i think we just need to to be actively talking about that and and being but it starts at home i'm glad you guys said that because the parents out there who just they hear this message and they nod their head, and then they get home at the dinner table and no, we're gonna go to a four year school. That's not where it's all about. I mean, you need to be able to actually listen to your kids. That's, I, I'm a big advocate for actually talking. Let's find out what they're interested in, right. and then start teaching them and giving them, putting them around people that's gonna help them get better in those areas. And if we're not doing that, what are we doing? Right, and you know, like like you said, like we are always we are always talking to the kids to find out. You know, what are you interested in? What would you like? We allow we have allowed them to make the decisions that they have, which is currently paying off. You know, next mm-hmm. year they'll be at the Burton Center for Arts and Technology, which we're humbled about and we're excited about. And but that's only because we sat there and we let them find their path instead of saying, right. This is what you will do. This right. is how I did it. This is how your your parent your grandparents did it and their parents before them. That's we can't do that anymore. Not mm-hmm. today, you know, especially in the world that we're living now, we were made for change. And it's so, you know, like now Michael's heavy into mechatronics, but that might change next year. He might right. try to find another path. And we have got to be able to give them that space to either fail or to proceed. Uh-huh. That's right. And it starts at home. Like you said, it starts at home. And so, so, you know, I'm hoping the parents out there that are listening to this realize that and lean into this and not just, just glaze over it and then, you know, just move on to the next topic. But I mean, you really, you, you got to be open to, you yeah. know what, my kid, you know, they may be a welder and that's great. <laughs> you know, that's, that's a great, great path for them. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's not all hung, hung up on that four year degree, you know, that piece of paper, I think we put so much value on it. And, you know, speaking to that specifically, maybe we can talk a little bit about the financial impact. Cause you guys mentioned it, you know, you graduate, you learn a trade. A lot of times, you know, that, that that's a lot lower price point for that, and sometimes you can get that training paid for, right? Through co-ops, yeah. interns, things like that. You don't have a hundred thousand dollars in uh, student loan debt and a uh-huh. degree, and that you're making, you know, thirty-five thousand dollars in, right? I mean, you actually you're coming out with a skill where you're making significant money without that financial burden. So maybe speak to that a little bit on how you guys feel there. Yeah, now, I have a good example of that we have an apprenticeship program at Mercer in, in welding right now, and we're and we're just about to start the machining of this summer. Awesome. And we have a young gentleman 
uh, that came from Salem, he started working with us before and after school. Um, and he come in for his apprenticeship and he went back to school and he graduated and we offered him a full time job. But during the apprenticeship, you were talking about the college and the finances and all that. Let's just look at the college. You go to college, you get four years and you're paying college loans pretty much the rest of your life. Mm-hmm. With this young man, he came in, we paid him, we gave him partial benefits and we gave him the apprenticeship. You know, we, we, we taught him how to do the things like as a welder and I'm not knocking on the skills USA or Salem high school or anything like that by no means, but the, they, they taught him how to do full penetration welds, butt welds, T joints, all position welds and read blueprints. And they, they assembled like, um, uh, utility buildings, they made barbecues, you know, it sold those things to support their program, which is great. So when he came to us, Mercer USA in Salem, um, we taught him how to be a welder under the SME umbrella, how to, uh, uh, uh read x-rays and look at his x-rays, his welded, uh, x-rays and, uh, TIG. See, here's the thing, Chris, TIG is the big gap here. Okay. Right. TIG is the cleanest weld. It's the best weld, and we cannot find TIG welders anywhere. Anywhere. Why I mean, is that? I mean, I'm, I'm familiar with TIG welding versus you know just standard welding. Why is it? It's an art. And, you know, I don't think a lot of people around here do TIG welding, but at Mercer we um, we weld uh, very uh, special material. It's exotic material, uh, precious metals. Right. And we TIG TIG weld that on them, nothing else, and because uh, it's got to be clean, it's got to have a backing gas, all that. Okay. Um, but we, there's nobody around that really teaches that. And so TIG welders are few and far between. I mean, we just can't find them. So we brought this kid from Salem and, uh, taught him how to TIG, taught him how to fit. Um, so when you say taught him how to TIG, so is that really just OJT just right there on the job? Is that how you're teaching that skill? That's exactly right. Cause the, the TIG welders we have now. We had a facility in California, in Oxnard, California, and we brought them to Virginia and they're excellent. I mean, these guys are top of the top of their class. They've been doing it their whole life. It's an art. I mean, TIG welding, you almost can't teach it. It's something you got to do, keep doing it. And, but the, the, the group that we have are excellent teachers and they taught this young man how to TIG. So basically getting back to the finance part of it, this gentleman's not going to college. He's not going to have a, a, a loan to pay the rest of his life. He has a trade. He's getting very well compensated for that trade. And then while he was learning, he was getting paid for that and with right. partial benefits. Right. And so this, this young man, his future set and he, and that's what he wants to do. He's very happy. He's very uh, ambitious. And, um, you know, I think, you know, if I had about 10 more in him, I think we'd be in a good, really good spot. And I think that's what, you know, like Jody sitting here saying giving you the example and telling the story i think that's what how we have to reach a lot of these high schoolers and soon we have to start Uh like even Uh in their freshman or sophomore year telling them the story making it fun making it exciting Uh but also not telling them that this was their only option there i've known many many people who have gone into a trade that have also while in that trade done classes night school and learn yes, something else. You absolutely. always have room to learn something else, but also they're not in debt. They were able to pay for mm-hmm. that schooling while they were doing something they were very passionate about. Mm-hmm. And like Jody said, it is an art. All of it is an art. It Yes, it is about measuring and matrix and math. Yes, you need mm-hmm. those. But bottom line, you have to have that art side of your brain to perform, especially TIG welding, because I've seen it. It is, right. it is precious and... Mm-hmm. You know, so I truly believe that we have to present it not as something like you're going to come home with welding dust, although that's my favorite smell, believe it or not, but that you're not going to come home with welding dust all over you or you're going to, it's a dirty job or it's not, you know, it's not fulfilling. We have got to let them know that if you are passionate about something like this, this is for you. And, you know, another thing is, Chris, the safety is on another level. I mean, I remember years ago welding, you know, they 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 wouldn't wear this, the proper equipment, you know, they yeah. just take in all that gas and, and smoke and everything. But in this day and time, especially with the company I work for, safety is number one. And it just makes it a lot cleaner for them when they're doing their job, you know. 
Well, so. I'm, cu- I'm curious on this program. So it sounds like it's an apprenticeship program where this, ju- this young man came in and, and basically you're building your, that, that, that backlog of skilled labor that's going to be able to work for Mercer in the future. Yes, sir. What can we be doing then for something like Mercer is taking a leading stance here. That's great. So maybe speak to the industrial manufacturer out there that may be listening because we have a lot of those who follow EcoAssWise as well. You know, that, that starts, that's a couple of things. That's a commitment f- from your company. You know, that's an, inv- that's a significant investment too, because you're probably not getting that return, right? You know, for, for a while, there's a lot that goes into teaching that young man, you know, that those skills to be able to get to the point to where, you know, he can actually be on the production line. So you have to have somewhat of a long-term strategy when you go into these types of programs, if you're the manufacturer, but you also need to paint that picture and that roadmap for the individual so they can see where they're headed and where they're going. Cause you know, this generation now they want to know where, you know, they want to see it. They want to see the path. Absolutely. So, right. so maybe speak to that a little bit. I'm curious on, you know, and also maybe it sounded like there was one spot there. Why, why not multiple or is it a funding thing? So just, to, just curious on that as well. Um, well, the, the apprenticeship, what we did was is as a company, we reached out to Salem high school manufacturers. They need to do this. Proactive. You know, if, right. if they're having if they're having issues with finding trades, uh, tradesmen's women, um, you know, uh, uh, journeymen's, um, they need to reach out to the schools and say, you know, hey, this is what we do, and what can you offer me, mm-hmm. you know, and then mm-hmm. and, and if it's just on the surface, then we'll say, okay, that's good. Then we'll bring them in and teach them everything else they need to know. Right. Um, so that's what we did. We reached out to Salem. We even had the local news come out and do a little uh, segment on it. So we we got it out there through the media. And um, so, when you say we, who 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 was the we? Is that HR? I, is that uh, actually it would be uh, HR and my general manager at Mercy. But okay. They're, okay. You know, they're trying to uh, get the apprenticeship off the ground, the apprenticeship program, and trying to get these young individuals to want to come out and you know be a part of what. Well, be a part of our team. So do they own that program? Like from, I'm thinking from a manufacturer standpoint, like who actually owns like managing that individual and, and putting, you know, putting them that, down the path. That is just through the, through the guys on the floor. You know, it's, uh, we okay. will, assign, we will assign that individual with our, uh, say one of the, our best TIG welder or, or, you know, but they'll get a little bit from everybody because everybody has something different to offer. Right. Um, right. So, so our apprenticeship, when I say apprenticeship program, it is within our company only. You know, we, we reach out to the, uh, the the schools to bring them in. And and so we can teach them, you know, uh, what they did not learn in school. Yeah. And then offer them a job. And I think it's a team effort. It's, oh, it is a team it's effort. Every, it's Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. It's a team now, effort. Now, how long was this program? Um, this program was lasting. Um, they did it little bits and pieces, you know, like the, the young man was in school. He was a junior and he was coming in before and after school. And basically it was just the goal was, is by the time he graduated, we wanted to be able to offer him a job. Right. Right. So, you know, and it worked out really good. Like I said, we're getting, we're doing the same, getting ready to do the same thing for the machine shop this summer. And, uh, you know, because the, that's another thing, machining, manual machining is, uh, is Oh, that's dead. It's thing of the past. I mean, I, I ran a machine shop at Eco here for years and, you know, trying to find manual machinists. Yes, sir. I mean, that, that is a, that's a diamond in the rough. Yeah, right? yeah. You know, that's that, another hurdle that we, we're trying to get over because, you know, now there's so many companies, as you know, Chris, that are, you know, running off of the uh, CNC program platform. And when you have that, when you have a full machine shop with just nothing but CNC, you have like maybe two technicians that go around, set the machines up. Right. And then you just got a button pusher after that. That's right. Somebody that QA and that's it. So that really takes away from that trade, you know, that art. You know? Oh, yeah. So, and speaking of art, I just thought about this when you said that. The last machinist I hired before we got out of that you know, that business, he came in to his job interview without, he didn't have a resume. You know what he showed up with? He showed up with an actual photo album. And I, he and he opened the album. He, I was like, "What you got there, man?" He's like, "Well, here, check this out." And I mean, he had he had taken pictures of all the different machining that he had done. You know, and nice. again, 
we were doing motor repair and so had he. So he, this is not like elaborate, you know, thing. This is like end bells and sleeves and rotor shafts. He's like, but he's like, but look at this. This was how messed this was up. This was before. And look at it now. I said, Jamie, you're hired. When can you start? <laughs> you know, cause yeah, that, I mean, that, that, that just speaks to way. that. Yeah. yeah. Great way to do it. Oh yeah. I mean, it's the, the whole art standpoint. I mean, it really does. You don't think the artist standpoint when, when these trade skills, but it is there. I mean, and it really is when you lean into it. Has it. To be. it has to be. No, I mean, I agree. Absolutely. So maybe think about the people out there who are listening right now and they want to be advocates like you are. I mean, you got them pumped up, you know, Jody and, J and Amber on, on being advocates for vocations. Where do they need to go? Where do they need to start spending time? Where, where would you refer them to, to start really leaning in to, to, to support? I would definitely go to the schools, the trade schools, the high schools, um, and, and tap into that. Mm -hmm. um, definitely start with the trade schools because that's what, you know, Tim has, been doing here yes. lately and he gave a craft course at Burton and the mechatronics lab on what he teaches now mm -hmm. and that has led into more open doors mm -hmm. through other high schools so definitely start with the trade schools yes and definitely um stay away from temp services at, at all measures i mean mm -hmm. and if you do have to go through a temp service you'll definitely have to bed it out from beginning to end mm -hmm. you know and mm -hmm. also when you're working for companies like where Jody works, mm -hmm. I would just go to your main general manager and be like, Hey, I've got this idea. I really think that if we go to our local schools mm -hmm. and really just tell them about what we do, our story, get them a little bit excited about it. Right. I think it'll draw interest and you will get the school on board. It will take mm -hmm. a little while, be patient, but they will come on board. Right. And, um, you know, I'll tell you something that from my experience, Chris, that when I came out of high school, minimum wage was three seventy five an hour. <laughs> You're old. And then I went to my, <laughs> I, know, I, know. I went to my first machine shop job and was making eight fifty an hour. So if you do the math and you do the, the percentages there to what minimum wage is now, right? And, yeah. and compare the pay rates, you know, and it's not the company's fault. The companies are doing what they can. It's just that. I don't know. Somewhere along the way, something got missed. You know, right. it is. Uh, the companies, you know, like a company I work for is great. I mean, they, they treat us well, they pay us well, but some companies just don't, you know, right. it, yes. it's just, it, it just it went by the wayside. It was like it missed their generation or something. I don't know. But, yeah. Um, that was what lured me. My point is that's what lured me to want to be a machinist. I was like, you know, cause our dad was a machinist. And I was like, I want to make that money. Yeah, yeah. that's right. That's yeah. right. And of course, eight fifty an hour starting out was good, but the the carrot was like around fifteen bucks an hour, and that's when I got on it. Uh, Caterpillar, you know, and it was right. That was really where I, my that was my springboard right there, and um, and it was very uh, it was a good adventure. But uh, I also think that you know, as much as we change the mindset at home with our kids, I think a lot of companies out there need to change their mindset as well. Yeah. I think the four-year degree with the master's and the PhD needs to be thrown out the window because if you do that, I think you're going to find a lot of dedicated, good employees. And I I think that's also where we went, went wrong. We don't look at um, if somebody has had a trade in the past or if they went to a trade school, they're looking more at the college degrees. And I think that mindset needs to change quite a bit. I'm, I mean, you know, Tim and our story, we were from the College of Hard Knocks. We've learned everything just by mm -hmm. studying and watching and learning from other people. And I think right. that really is the best way, like apprenticeship. Absolutely. Right. And unfortunately, uh, you know, the generations that's passed on over time, I mean, you got to look at technology. You know, when I was a kid, I was outside all the time. Right. I, was, I started working at 13. I was mowing yards in the neighborhood, had a paper route. You know, you don't see that these days. You know, everybody wants, to, all the kids want to stay in and play on their phone and on their you know, video games and all that. And I think that has to say a little something to, you know, our future. So. The reason I laugh yeah. is it's like, it's like on our 13th birthday, you knew what was coming next. Mom would say, get a job. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, for Find real. something. I don't, you know, for she real. was telling me like babysit, but you know, wash what? hair at a beauty I'll never beautician. forget when I had my first paycheck, Chris, my look on my mom's face. I'll never forget. It. She yeah. was so proud. <laughs> yeah, and that's she right. Was relieved. See, I'm a parent now, so it's like, okay, now I get it. She was right. very relieved. Like, that's okay, right. I don't need my son's making money. <laughs> <laughs> Again, it all comes back to home. And I think the, the, yeah. the heart, heart of a lot of this conversation, you know, to be that advocate for vocations, it starts at, at the dinner table. I mean, yeah. really starts okay. there having conversations, real conversations. And, and I tell you what, this has been a lot of fun, but we're not going to let you guys go yet. Cause you know, I, I, I've never had a brother and a sister on before. So I, I got to have a fun lightning round before we go here. So okay. I, I want to take you back to when you were kids, you're, you're underneath the, you're living in the same house. So, uh, Amber, you have to answer for Jody and Jody, you have to answer for Amber. So, so, okay. so Jody, what was, what was Amber's favorite food as a kid? Amber's favorite food as a kid. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Well, mom, mom, mom's cooking was everything. <laughs> I mean, uh, I don't think you have enough time, Chris, but, uh, <laughs> no, Amber, uh, I'd say pizza. Pizza was a big deal. You know, Amber, was he right? Yeah, pizza and mac and cheese. Mac and cheese, yeah. Pizza, right. mac and cheese. What, what was what was Jody's? <laughs> everything. Everything. And I'm a big guy, man. So yeah, it was everything. <laughs> I would I would say pizza, mac and cheese, spaghetti. Oh my gosh. Salmon patties. Oh my gosh, we're salmon and patties. But, Mom. Yeah. <laughs> salmon patties. Yeah, there you yeah. go. Our homemade butterscotch pie. Oh my gosh! And my, uh, her mashed potatoes are the best too. <laughs> See, I told you, Chris. I, I, I hear you. It. Oh man, <laughs> I, I'm heading to Roanoke when this is finished. All right. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> One of the things that um, Mom makes that has been given through the generations is our nanny Combs made this fruit salad mm -hmm. that has like the all the worst things you could think of: cottage <laughs> cheese, whipped cream. Right. Mandarin they, oranges. Well, they actually call it watercress or something. Yeah, like and pineapples and yeah. jello, and she'd mix it all together. But we call it Nanny Comb Salad because <laughs> my grandmother made yeah. it all the time. That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. Now, what was your, your favorite movie if you, if you remember together as a kid growing up? Favorite movie? Um, I had so many, Chris. Uh, my favorite movie, you know, Christmas time was a big deal. And it still is a big deal, but really a big deal when we all lived at home. And uh, I'd probably say Christmas Vacation. That was my answer, too. I was, I tell you what, I'll never forget when that came out and mom and dad had bought that. And we sat there and watched it. I just couldn't get enough. I want to see it again and again. And again. We watch it year round now because of yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, again, Chris, everything comes from home. That's right. That's right. That's right. And uh, so the last question for you guys on, on the lightning round, who was the favorite? Damn it. <laughs> okay. I'm the only one. I'm, I'm, mom, mom calls me baby boy everywhere. And you know what? That bothered me a bit. I, I'm proud to be your baby boy. So that's fine. <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. Well, I'll tell you what, this has been a fun conversation before we leave, you know, we always, we wrap up eco ask why with the why. So I, I like for each of you to answer this. So Amber, we can start with you. You know, why, you know, why do you think this is such an important topic? As you really you know, think about the main message that you're trying to convey to others here today, you know, what would be the compelling why? So I got chills again. Um, the why is we're very passionate about this because it's missing. Mm -hmm. It has been missing for years. I've seen it. It's been missing for 20 or so years. I would really love to see trades thrive again. Mm -hmm. I would really love to help a generation that's lost mm -hmm. and even you know i know we keep saying it starts at you know it really starts at home even if the home life is not particularly great right we want to be those mentors for those kids that need that you know extra you know pat on the back or that extra talking to and i that's my reason i just feel like i've seen a lot of kids lost and mm -hmm. You know, they're put down for not going to college or they don't have enough confidence to go out there and try something new. And I, I want to be that encourager to them. Absolutely. Absolutely. How, how about you, Jody? What would, you, what would be your why? 
Uh, my, my take in, on it is, is I would just like to see, you know, I look at the bigger picture. I'd like to see America, you know, do more for the first settlers, you know, and that's, that, that comes in trade. Right. Well, in trade schools, you know, instead of sending work uh, overseas, let's do it here, you know, right. and, and um, you know, that'll, that'll be great. Uh, and uh, again, like Amber said, it's for our, our youngest, younger generation. Um, you know, I got so much, um, you know, confidence out of, you know, doing what I was doing for years as being a machinist. It just made me feel really good. Um, I just think it would be good for the, for our younger uh, society. And mm-hmm. then on third, it would just help my company out tremendously. So you know, <laughs> I'd be a little bit selfish there. <laughs> and Jody and I have had talks about this, even with our mom. I would just love to see people love to work again. Yeah. No, no yeah. Yeah, yeah. This, yeah, I, I agree with Amber. This all this stuff in the past, and you know, I know it's COVID and all that, but I just, uh, I just think it's it puts everybody in the wrong, um, how do I say mindset? Mindset, yeah. But you know, it, it, when you work day to day, you know, and then you do something else, right. stay at home, whatever. You know, it's hard to get that back. You know, get yourself back in that group for some. Some it may not, but you know, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, I've been essential through this whole thing. I haven't uh, missed any work, thank God. And uh, but yeah, uh, we need to get the trade, uh, the trade schools, and the, and the manufacturing companies together. Right. And, and and then I think that's where it starts. Well, it starts at home, and then with the, you know with the trade schools. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. And then you get people excited again. <laughs> that's right. Well, that's we right. got. We got them excited with this one. I, and I tell you what, Amber, Jody, thank you so much for the Eco SY listeners. Go to the show notes because you'll be, have ways to connect with them both and, and see the wonderful things they're doing. I know TW Controls, you guys got so many options and, and things that are out there. And you're trying to, to support the next generation and just with your content in general. It's amazing. So we'll make sure all those links are there. And, and I can't thank you both enough for your time today. It's been, it's been a lot of fun. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Chris. I really enjoyed it. Thank you very much. Now, that was a fun conversation. The first brother-sister combo here on Eco Ask Why. But I tell you what, Amber and Jody, phenomenal people. Have a passion for what they do. Love their stories. So many connection points that I think really hit home for everyone, right? And again, it starts at home. But then you also, if you're a manufacturer, you have to have these programs to be able to engage this next generation. Just think that that, that young man that Jody talked about and all the things that were put in his path that's going to lead him to success. That's how you close the skills gap. One person at a time, one program at a time. And as you do that, if we all lean in together, it, we will make an impact. So great conversation. Lots of things we covered there. Go back, check out the show notes. Be sure to connect with Amber and Jody to learn more. Now, the war stories, we still want them. The good, the bad, the ugly, the funny, the the stuff you, you may not want anybody to know about, we can keep it anonymous. Don't worry. We, we, we will protect the innocent. Send those in. There are links in the show notes. You can connect directly with us for, for those war stories. And we will looking forward to, to serving them up and to showcasing them in the future. So if you're enjoying Eco Ask Why, we would ask that you simply share it with someone. Send them a text message. Send them an email. Go right to our website and just send the link over. Whatever you need to do, ecoasy.com. That's you can go right there and do it, do it directly. But give us some love here. We're trying every week to serve you guys with content like this that's engaging. But remember, people and ideas over products. That's what we're all about. Give us a like, write a review. That makes all the difference in the world. We hope you all have a great week. And remember, keep asking why.